What's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, had a good trading week last week, all that good stuff. Very insane week politically and overall for the markets. We had a pretty big pullback, lots of pre election volatility, and especially lots of downside and chip names and tech. If you tuned in last week, we had an all right list. I would say it could have been a little bit better. We did have U calls on watch, which actually did really good all the way up until Thursday, I think. Ran up pretty good, maybe about 8 to 10% and then randomly just one day I had a very big pullback so you overall did have a good week until that day and I believe it did close red on the week overall probably wiped out all the gains in that one day but hopefully you took profit if you took that trade and got out at the right time we were looking forward to get up to the 50 SMA at least and it actually rejected right off that 50 SMA so not a bad week for you despite that one big red day hopefully you were able to catch that one we also had Nike calls on watch which actually ended up being unchanged basically really didn't go anywhere we're past the Friday's close from last week and it kind of stayed within range and I'm still in that one right now. I'm in September calls. So for Nike, we need to get over 74. That is the key level. Make sure to watch that 74. It's been very strong resistance and overall it will need to get back over that. We also had Neo on watch, which actually broke out a channel. It looked pretty good. Monday, first thing, it did pull back very aggressively, back tested our channel line and actually bounced off of that on Tuesday, I believe. Had a pretty good run on Tuesday, but then the rest of the week, it really slowed down and kind of fell back within the channel. So Neo really didn't do too much. You could maybe keep that on watch, but I really wouldn't recommend looking at anything other than very long-term expiration. Right now, the setup is really not as clear because last week we had a channel breakout and now we kind of have it back with inside of that. And with all this Trump drama, we do have China names kind of pulling back, likely just due to trade tensions and other things. So China kind of catching some heat and as well, maybe some fear from potential tariffs. Trump was talking about raising tariffs, maybe do 100% on Chinese electric vehicles and other things. So that could be why it was pulling back. It also didn't close over that 50 SMA either. So Neo kind of did find some resistance there and overall kind of came back down from the one good green day it did have. And for trades last week, we did close that WBA position I had open. We had 12.5 calls for September. We closed the first portion at about 28% and I did hold a remainder up to 37% and we did close that out I think at like the 1190s or something which thank God because WBA rejected very aggressively and sold off Thursday and Friday. So we made about 28% on one portion and 37% on the last portion. We also had a QQQ call scalp. I ended up stopping out of that for a 35% loss. Made it up the next day with spy calls. Made about 44% on that one. And we bought at a key level, I think it was about 555 for SPY and it bounced very aggressively, very quickly before it went back down. And we sold just in the nick of time because it did sell off very aggressively after we sold. So that was the best winner of the week, about 44% on a SPY scalp, not too bad for about 10 minutes. We also had IWM 215 puts. This was about maybe a three to two day swing or something like that. I think we held, ended up being red for a little bit. I think we were down like 30 to 40%. And eventually IWM did come back down like I expected and we closed about 20 21% on Friday. We actually have IWM on watch this week, but instead of puts, I'm going to be looking at calls at the 9 EMA. So that's why I closed these because we are reaching that 9 EMA. And overall, it sold off very aggressively for a couple days, maybe looking for a dead cat bounce on that one. And this QQQ put, it is a very old trade from about maybe one or two months ago. I took one single contract for about 900 bucks, kept it on as a hedge. Overall, it did not play out at all. And I just ended up letting it expire. It was down so much. I didn't really see a reason to kind of scrape up the remainder of what was left. So I just went ahead and left it open just in case the market pulled back or I needed it. So that did expire on Friday. But otherwise, we had a really good run here. We do have these Nike calls as well. I'm still in these. And overall, just a really good run the past month or so. We did have two losses is here about 23 24 days ago and overall it's just been really good lots of green doing well and hopefully we can keep up the good work gonna keep losses at a minimum if possible and yeah hopefully this week's list is good we'll find some more scalps on the indexes spy qqq iwm stuff like that so i also do have a 300 dollars challenge going on right now on a Robinhood account. And one play I have open is a NVIDIA spread. It's a call debit spread. I'll put up a screenshot here so you can see. We've turned that $300 into about 609 so far. So about 100% return since the new year. Not too bad. I wish it has grown a little bit more, but overall kind of been taking our time 
doing very small spread plays, keeping lots of cash on the side so we're not risking too much. And overall, it's been doing pretty good. So hopefully we can get it to a thousand eventually and then take it from there. And if you are interested in these challenge plays, just keep a lookout in the options chat in our Discord. There's no way for me to really alert spreads on our app here. So I've just been posting them in the options chat. So just keep a lookout. Maybe search my name and 300 challenge because I usually put the keyword 300 challenge if it's a challenge play. And you should be able to find a post, you know, update if I closed, loss, gain, entry, exit, stuff like that. And we'll go ahead and get into the economic data real quick. We do have a pretty stacked week actually i would say monday nothing scheduled tuesday we do have existing home sales at 10 a.m most importantly is going to be the services pmi and the manufacturing pmis at 9 45 that should bring mid session volatility about 15 minutes after the bell rings for the open wednesday we also have new home sales so we got existing home sales tuesday more real estate data on wednesday for new home sales and then on thursday we do have the gdp coming out this always has a chance to move the market it has moved the market past couple times it came out. So definitely pay attention to that. All these others really don't move the market that much. It's going to be GDP that's going to move us the most. And then on Friday, it's going to be the most important data of the week. It's going to be the PCE. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge over CPI. So it's very important that we continue to see that trend in inflation go lower. It's very simple. Inflation down, good. Inflation up, bad. And then we also have consumer sentiment at 10, which can bring mid-session volatility. This can definitely move us pretty well. And it definitely gives you some good scalp opportunities for big moves in the indexes. So not too bad. We got PMI. Tuesday, GDP, Thursday, Friday, PCE, as well as consumer sentiment. Pretty stacked week. Not too bad. We also have Google and Tesla earnings. I believe that's maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Yep, you can see Tuesday here, Tesla and Alphabet right here. Also Visa and Enphase. So that should be interesting. We also got Chipotle, IBM, Ford. Got a couple decent ones. So Tesla and Google is going to be kind of the warm up and it's probably going to set the tone for all the big tech giants coming up because we have like Microsoft and Amazon and Apple still to have to report. So it's going to be some big ones coming up with Tesla and Alphabet kind of kicking us off here. And before we get into our setups, we'll go over the seasonality real quick. Last week is actually pretty bullish for seasonality, but we really didn't follow that. We had a pretty good day on Monday. Overall, the market did go up on Monday, so we kind of followed the pattern. And then overall, we did fall off a cliff. Big tech pullback, spy pullback, lots of stuff pullback. This week, there's not really anything of substance here. For the 20-year data set from July 22 to 26, you can see we have winning trades at 45%, summarized profit actually at negative 2% for longs. So nothing really here. You can see it's kind of choppy as well. No big up thrust, no big down thrust either. It's right when July ends and into August when we kind of start seeing that historic weakness all the way basically until the first half of August. And then it kind of picks up again. And then September, it gets even worse historically. But for this week specifically, nothing really crazy. Like I said, winning trades 45%, not a very good probability. Also negative summarized profit at 2%. 10 year is not really that much different either. So the 10 year is at 50% winning trades to the long side. Summarized profit negative 1% with a very flat line kind of sequence here for this week coming up historically. So nothing special for seasonality. I don't really have anything pointing at a big move up or down. Not until August comes along. Then August, you can kind of start being a little bit more careful just in case maybe put a hedge on, buy spy puts. VIX call is something to kind of hedge your portfolio if you are net long the market. We do enter a period of weakness right here. All right, and for setups this week, I do have three for you. Our first one here, we're looking at IWM, which has had a really killer run from the 11th up to the 17th or so. We actually bought puts here on Monday, I think. It was closer to the high. We made a really big push up the next day. But overall, we did have this big 78.6% Fibonacci resistance. And it rejected off of that and then fell back within the channel line. So once it fell back within the channel line, I went ahead and held into Friday. And then Friday fell even more. And that's when we closed for that 20% gain. Could have made a little bit more, but I did enter very early. And I was wrong on the first entry here because we had this really big up thrust candle. So I could have gotten screwed. But overall, I felt pretty confident with all this buy and balance and all these gaps and all this crazy buy side imbalance that we probably retrace at least half the candles and come back down into the 921 EMA cloud or just the 921 EMA in general. And we did do that. So now the IWM has pulled back. I do like longs a little bit here, kind of keep the momentum going. Obviously, there's been a pretty good rotation here from tech into small caps, mid caps, financials like XLF, banks, stuff like that. And overall, I do want to see a bounce from this 921 EMA cloud. So maybe it might need to come down just a little bit more to tap that. But either way, I feel like it's close enough to start looking for a bounce of the general area, at least. And overall, I probably will need to get back outside the channel so I can get rid of all of this. This is the kind of 
channel line we have going right now. Test one, test two, test three. Did break out of that, fell back within. So that will be an issue, probably about 220. So you got about three points or so until it taps 220 and 220 will probably meet with the channel line and maybe act as a resistance point. So you got to be careful with that. But overall, it's just a simple kind of dip by play at the 921 cloud. Looking for a bounce of this general area. Maybe if we can get down into it or closer into it, I would definitely be willing to buy there. But overall, if it does want to bounce on Monday, I'm willing to kind of take a stab here as well because it's pretty close to the 921 cloud here. So IWM looking at calls. I don't think I'm going to enter a swing on it. I'm probably just going to look for like day trades. If I did enter a swing, I probably wouldn't hold it too long because we do have the, like the Federal Reserve coming up. We have PCE on Friday. I don't really like holding through data that much. And overall, we're kind of coming into a weak time in August. And I think I'd rather wait till midtime in August to kind of wait for a dip in that period and then buy that based off the seasonality, at least for swing trades. So that's for IWM looking at calls. Definitely watch this 921. EMA cloud or just the 9 EMA looking for a bounce there at least up to 220 or so. All right, number two on to AMD. So this is actually a little bit riskier of a play because we don't have like a confirmed candle showing us it's going to bounce yet or it has bounced. We're kind of just speculating that this 200 SMA could hold. We'll probably need to reclaim this 153.30s, which is this right here. Get rid of the volume real quick so it's a little bit cleaner. So this 153.30s, this is kind of a previous double bottom support. We'll probably need to get back over that. Max, you could project up to maybe like the 50 SMA, which is right here, or the 921 cloud or the 921 EMA. Because if you start testing those EMAs, they could act as resistance points. So you got to be careful with that. So AMD is more of a dead cap bounce type of play, something quick. I definitely wouldn't be loading AMD for, you know, earnings or anything like that. It's going to be Tuesday on the 30th. So this is going to be strictly like day trades, scalps, looking for a dead cap bounce and kind of sticking to intraday plays, getting out by the end of the day. So that's for AMD. Very simple. 200 SMA support. You got support. 153s it will need to get back over that so if you get that reclaim back over 153s you could definitely take a stab maybe we can retrace these big red candles eventually they probably will want to fill those back up just a little bit at least up to the moving averages once they test those they'll probably try to reject off of that area go back lower etc so that's for amd Looking at short-term calls, scalps, day trades, all that good stuff. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over CELH. It's going to be Celsius, one of my favorite energy drinks. So this is a very simple kind of discounted support play. We have been selling for two months now. We're now into a major 4940s to 4811 zone. So you got the 48s at these lows right here and 4940s at this low right here where I started this Fibonacci retracement. You can see this 61.8% play was amazing. So if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know the 61.8% plays are pretty good in my eyes. They're good for rejections, good for bounce plays, and this is proof of that. So the 61.8 is also called the golden ratio. Definitely go check out Fibonacci, how to draw them. It's very simple. You just pick a high and a low and you measure it out. But anyways, now into that 4940s to 48s kind of zone here. It's very simple. I'm looking for a dead cap bounce on this. For price targets, you can kind of only go off the 921 cloud. So if you get price kind of going back up into that, it might try to reject that. And you got to be careful. And you really only have till August 8th before earnings. So I'm not sure how I feel about this for a swing trade. But if I did enter a swing trade, I would be out before earnings. And I would definitely buy September expiration minimum. Because not only are you dealing with a countdown into earnings and having to gamble on earnings, you also have the 921 cloud in the way that has essentially been acting as lower highs and rejection points. Got a rejection here. You got a rejection right here. And I feel like that September expiration will help you deal with any rejection risk or any drawdown risk if it gets back up into that. But overall, I feel like this could be a good bounce play. And you do have room up to, you know, like 53, 54, upper 56s before you start testing that 921 cloud. And you have very strong support at the 48s, like I said. So you got moving averages working against you. You are trending below them and that comes with risk, but that is kind of part of buying value areas and looking for discounts. You will have to buy below the moving averages, just how it works. And it's very simple. Risk off would be under 48 flat. If it breaks 48 flat, you might have a little bit more downside. It looks like there's a little low right here as well at about 45 right here. So, so you got 45 below 48. That is a low right here. But overall, the zone is 48 to 49, 46. So this bounce zone and this bounce zone right here. So that's for CLH looking at calls. Probably going to be looking at day trades on it. But like I said, if you do want to enter a swing, you got up till the 8th before earnings. And you'll want to get September expiration to deal with any moving average risk, any rejection risk once it gets back up to that cloud. All right, and on to the indexes. So last week we were looking at SPY and we had to go down to the 15 minute time frame because it was such a tight 
weight range. Here is Friday's close. We had this 227% fib as a potential resistance area. We also had 562 30s, which is also this right here. We had 560, which is a support area right here from Friday. And then we also had the 555s, which is that 200%. So we actually went under the 555s, but we'll go over these real quick. So Monday, we actually held up that 560. I mentioned you could probably start looking for longs if uh, this 560 held up, which we did on Monday pretty well. And the max upside I could project was obviously just 563 because there's no way I can project a new all-time high or anything like that. I have to see how it reacts once it gets up there. So we really did kind of have a stall out, actually. We put in one new high. It fell back within. We came back down into 560 again, really big push up candle here, push back up to 563s, rejected off it again. So overall, it did respect the levels pretty well. Even have a bounce off 562 right here, which is a back test over here. Another bounce off 562 right here on this candle back test. So it respected it pretty well. We gapped down on Wednesday. It actually tested 560, but acted as resistance instead of support. So it rejected off that 560, which came from this right here, and it fell down some more. And then here is Thursday. So that SPY 44% scalp that I showed you on the X Trades app, we bought right here at the 555s. So this big candle right here is where we made that 40% scalp. So we bought it like 1040, I think. And I think we sold, I'd have to check. Yeah, 1041 and sold at 1054. But that was off that 555, 200% Fibonacci that we've had for the past couple of weeks. That was a key level to look for dip buys at. So here it was right here. We pulled in 1040 right here. So we bought at 1041. And we sold about 1054. So we sold up here and it rejected very aggressively after that. So we got in and out at the perfect time. Luckily, made about 40% on that. So there was a lot of different things that you could use these levels for. You could use them for support, uh, resistance areas, old support as new resistance. We also bought off of that right there. You could also play this as a flush level. So once 555s broke, really nice downside. Bounced back up, kind of took the 555s as a new resistance level, fell some more. And then we had another level below that at 5 50 so i mentioned actually a while ago this is probably two weeks ago i mentioned this is a really good value area to start looking for dip buys at 550 so this is a old res area potential back test area and i think when we were all the way up here i mentioned this is probably the best area to wait for to look for dip buys obviously and then we started making new structures up here so we were able to get some new levels but overall this still did kind of have a short-term bounce so here's that 550 level on thursday again really nice bounce off of that could have scalped off of that as well so there's lots of ways you can use these levels but now that we're kind of starting to expand volatility a little bit more we don't have to look at the 15 minute time frame strictly for levels and stuff we do have some new stuff here so we have a old kind of trend line all the way from april test one test two test three we want to see spy holding this up right here so you want to see this trend line holding i can even get rid of all this crap for you so we'll draw it like this start from here point two test one test two test three test four needs to hold up here now it is very key to get back over 550 which is this old back test area old resistance area we have to get back over that if we can get back over 550 we can retrace these red candles right here one issue we do have we're starting to close under the 921 ema combo so we're closed under the cloud it closed back over the 550 could get you back within the cloud back within the 921 trend we need to do that. Kind of like this back here, we closed under it. We need to get back on a big candle like this, something reclaiming, getting back in the trend, and then we can continue it up. So that's the only issue. We are closing under the 921 combo. And like I said, we do have this old trend line here and also a crucial 550 back test area we need to get back over as well. So that is key. We need to hold this trend line. We need to get back over 550 and we need to get back over the 921 cloud. So this is a pretty good area to look for dip buys if we get back over 550. And and then maybe we can see a little short term kind of dead cat bounce. So that's what I got for you on SPY this week. Very crucial trend line with a very crucial 550 level that we need to get back over. I know this looks messy, but it's really not that bad once you zoom into the 15 minute time frame. You'll definitely want to keep these Fibonacci areas as well, especially these extensions. If you wanted to get rid of all this, you could even just do the extensions. So we get rid of this, 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 and now we just have the extensions. You got the 1.272, 1.618, 200, 227. So that's really it, guys. 
guys spy it needs to hold up this trend line if we do start falling back under the trend obviously i could project down to you know 543s at the 1.618 and that's really about it i have to see what it does from there and maybe i could project lower after that but really there's only this little gap below it's really not that big so i don't really see an urgency to get down there just yet and a spy bounce will require vix to cooperate as well and we'll go over that later after we get over qqq but pretty key trend line need to get back over 550 also need to reclaim your 921 cloud looking like a decent discount area all right now to qqq so last week we had 50350 we have 499.62 which is the friday high we have 495.17 which is this pivot from friday and we also had 490 so here is first thing monday i mentioned if 495 held and we kind of bounced off of that you could look for longs on that worked out pretty good ran all the way up to the 499 as you'd expect from a pretty wide range like this you got 499 to 495 you know about four points wide basically respected that perfectly kind of broke over it a little bit but once it fell back within you can see it ran all the way back down to the 495 again bounced off of that kind of bounced off it again right here and overall just respected it pretty well at least until here on wednesday when we gapped down so we gapped all the way down into 486 486 is a very old resistance and back test area well it's not that old it's uh, june late june triple top res right here so i mentioned probably a couple weeks ago this is a good area to look for dip buys look for a back test we did not respect that at all so our chance to kind of bounce from that 486 or back test was here on wednesday but you could see really didn't get any push or any kind of urgency to fill this gap or anything like that we had a big breakdown candle here short-term bounce and overall it stayed under 486 the whole time we didn't get a single close over 486 nothing indicating that it would continue and try to bounce so when you're trying to buy the dip and look for a continuation it's very important that price closes over a key level especially like 486 as a back test you need price closing over that to continue the next day we did not get that on wednesday so what did we do on thursday we dumped some more we had a 476 support area which actually respected it pretty well you can see it bounced from it right here kind of bounced from it right here that 476 26 comes from all the way over here so we can go down to the one hour so you can see it a little bit better so here's the 476 26 right here and then here's 473.82 structure low right here. Here is our 486.84. This is a potential backtest area that we wanted to see a bounce. We did not get that. And then here's all our levels from the previous week that we went over as well. So we're in a completely new realm here. We're at new levels. We're not even close to last week's levels. So that requires starting to look at new things. Overall, QQQ will need to hold this 473.82. We also need to get back over this trend line. So this trend line is a one day trend line. Same thing as SPY. It's very very old kind of all the way from april test one test two test three we are briefly under that but the fact that we're not under 473.82 which is a structure low yet means we're kind of still within the range and we're kind of safe for the most part we also had a crucial close under the 921 cloud here on wednesday and that set us up for that two days of red thursday and friday so it's kind of the first close under the 921 combo in a little bit we had a brief fake out right here back in may 2024 we kind of broke it right here but we closed back within it that was the important part to keep the trend going and overall we really haven't seen like a big downside structure or sequence like this since this right here and that's when we lost the 921 combo right here so closing and holding the 921 combo is very important on the one day for an uptrend same thing for downtrends you want to see it keep closing under the 921 combo rejecting off the 921 combo etc that is your short to medium term trend gauge using a 921 ema combo so the key for qqq is very simple you want to see it getting back over 476 26 also getting back over the trend line closing back over it that's the important thing you can see on the one hour here that probably require you know 479 480 to get back over this trend line uh comfortably and really to continue any downside it would need to get under 473 82 which is a very strong support old structure area so you could look at scalps at the 473 82 very short term scalps because obviously if it gets back up to trend line and back test it it could reject off of it for a real upside move you want to see it closing back over the trend line you want to see it getting over this it's very important so a very critical zone here we're briefly under the trend line but we're still over support. So wait for a signal if you must. Scalp off 473s maybe. And I believe the futures are actually up pretty good. The NASDAQ futures, ES, I believe they're up pretty nicely right now. So overall, they are holding up, not really breaking down. Even after the Biden news came out that he was stepping down, price is doing okay for the moment. Obviously, futures, they can change instantly overnight while you're asleep. So... We'll have to see how the open looks but overall you got spy holding trend still you got qqq 
at least above support, but briefly under trend. Both are under their 921 EMA combo. That is an issue. And you also have VIX very elevated. So that's why we're going to go into VIX next. It's very important that we get under some of these key levels. But overall, both are still kind of within structures. Like I said, QQQ support, at least, even though it's under trend. SPY is still over trend and doing pretty good and could see a bounce from that. But it is very dependent on the VIX, which we'll go into right now. So what we were kind of warning about finally came into fruition with these 1237 to 1182 lows holding up. I mentioned that people were still hedging at least the last three weeks because every time we get to this 1182 or 1237, we were seeing VIX spike back up. And the fact that it wasn't able to break the 1182 or get back under that kind of had me skeptical that people were hedging for a reason and that could result in a pullback in the market. I did also mention your magic numbers for VIX to close back over to see a pullback in the market was 1367 and 14. So we did close over that on Wednesday and that really set us up for that downside Thursday and Friday. Just that one simple close over that 1367 and 14 area really set us up for that big spike in the VIX and big pullback in the market. It also closed back over 1540, which is a multi-top rejection area back all the way from New Year all the way until March. You got a rejection, rejection, so on and so forth, multiple rejections of 1540. We also had rejections at 1604. So rejection point here, rejection point here and a rejection point right here. So that's why I have 1540 and 16 mark as well. And we ended up closing 1651 on Friday. This big wick was a glitch. That was not a real VIX move. Could have been from the crowd strike bullshit, that big tech outage we had. You can see VIX really kind of glitched out and tweaked out here. I really wish they would get rid of that and fix it. Make it go void so this ugly candle wasn't here because it's really throwing me off. But anyways, key thing for VIX this week, if you want to see SPY bounce and bounce off that trend, see QQQ reclaim its trend, we need to see VIX falling back under 16. It's very simple. Another key level you want to fall back under, 1540. So we want to see it closing under 16 and closing under 1540. And I showed you in the past as well, if you keep up with every single week's videos, closing back under these is key for when it gets back elevated, if you wanna see a bounce in the market. Likewise, back here, we wanted to see a closing back under 1367 to start bouncing. That's why you see this fall back under 1367, another rejection, 1367. Likewise, back here, we got a little bit elevated, but once we started closing back under 16 right here, we had a really big fall, as well as closing back under this 1794, this big candle set us up for the move back lower. And this is a really big bounce in the market, this whole sequence. So that's why we wanna see a closing back under 16. Otherwise, there's a lot of free space here, so that's kind of a worry. If the VIX does wanna spike and keep going higher, obviously max upside I can project right now it's going to be 1794 big spike area right here where it rejected so if we got up to there we could definitely reject off of that 1794 at that spot so that's a plus so if vix does go higher here at least it can reject here you can maybe look for a dip buy once the vix reaches this 1794 to 18 area now if it starts closing back over 18 obviously that's a free shot up to the 20s we could even mark this for the future just in case 2136 is kind of the peak so that's really all i got for you this week uh vix needs to close back under 16 and also 1540, it's going to be key for a bounce in the market next week. If you wanted to wait for VIX to do that, close back under that before going long, that could be smart. Because we're kind of just waiting to see if it bounces off the trend, if QQQ is going to hold up support and reclaim trend. And overall for them to do that, it may require that move under 16 and 1540 on the VIX. And then we want to see them closing back under that. So closing back under major levels to fall back to major lows. It's very simple. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Mark these VIX levels if you must. 1182, 1237, 1367, 1540, 1604, 1794, and 2136. So I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff so I'm not up super late. I love you. And I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.